Hello students, welcome to Inside Biology Classes. I am Dr. Shilpi. Today I will going to discuss about the biology subject and how we can study biology for the need point of view. Biology is a such subject hai jisme aap max to max score kar sakte ho bahut kam time mein. Honestly, other subjects mein bahut jada formula hai, numericals hai. किसी भी मोमेंट में किसी भी पॉइंट पे आप वहां पे मिस्टेक कर सकते हो बट बायोलॉजी में फार्मूलास वाले रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस हैं बट वो पोर्शंस बहुत कम है मोस्टली कॉन्सेप्चुअल है आपका अगर कांसेप्ट क्लियर है उस बेसिस पे बहुत सारे क्वेश्चंस पूछे जाते हैं आप कम से कम टाइम में मैक्स टू मैक्स क्वेश्चंस को सॉल्व कर सकते हो और वो सही भी हो सकता है इसका मतलब कि आप मैक्सिमम स्कोर कर सकते हो Definitely, लाने वाले students 360 में 340, 350, 355, even 360 भी लाते हैं। तो आप समझ लो, जो qualifying marks है neat exam के लिए, उससे तो कई गुना ज़्यादा, मतलब काफी ज़्यादा अकेला आपको biology दिला देगा, ठीक है? But आपको इसको पढ़ने के लिए क्या proper strategy रखनी है? क्या राइट right अप्रोच रखनी है वो सारी बातें मैं अपने ट्यूटोरियल लेक्चर में वन बाय वन सारे टॉपिक्स से के रिलेटेड मैं डिस्कस करूंगी और बताऊंगी बायोलॉजी में आप जो पढ़ना है आपको जो कांसेप्ट लेना है कोई बहुत सारी बुक्स नहीं आपको पढ़नी है जैसा कि आपको पता है नीट का जो सिलेबस है नीट ने जो नीट में जो बुक रिकमेंड किया गया है वो एनसीईआरटी बुक है जो अभी तक का ट्रेंड चला आ रहा था एनसीईआरटी बुक को लेकर के वो ये था कि मोर देन 85% क्वेश्चंस एनसीईआरटी से पूछे जाते थे जो कि ये प्रीवियसली अगर आप देखो 4 से 5 साल तक का जो क्वेश्चंस आने का जो पैटर्न रहा है वो बिल्कुल ऐसे ही था बट फिर क्या हुआ 85 और मोर देन 85 परसेंट क्वेश्चंस एनसीईआरटी से पूछा जाता था बियोंड इट आल्सो बट इस साल यानी इन दिस ईयर 2020 में अभी जो एग्जाम हुआ है उसमें जितने भी क्वेश्चंस आए हैं वो सारे के सारे क्वेश्चंस मोर देन 95 परसेंट क्वेश्चंस वो आपके एनसीईआरटी बुक से है तो अब आप समझ लो कि एनसीईआरटी बुक कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है और एनसीईआरटी बुक जब इतना इंपॉर्टेंट है तो आपको तो उसे पढ़ना ही होगा और आप कहोगे कि हां डेफिनेटली स्टूडेंट्स के लिए एनसीईआरटी बुक में जितने भी टेक्स्ट दिए हुए हैं वो काफी कंसाइज मैनर में है समझना थोड़ा डिफिकल्ट होता है बट तुमने ऑनेस्टली आप जब मेरे ट्यूटोरियल लेक्चर को आप देखोगे ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक्स का 100% एनसीईआरटी कवर होगा एनसीईआरटी में जो भी कंसाइज मैनर में कॉन्सेप्ट दे रखा है उसको मैं इलैबोरेट करके लेक्चर में बताऊंगी और बहुत इजीली आप उसको समझ लोगे कहीं पे कोई दिक्कत नहीं आएगी लेट्स स्टार्ट टुडेस टॉपिक द लिविंग वर्ल्ड द चैप्टर 1 द लिविंग वर्ल्ड बेसिक ऑफ लाइफ आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्लेन सम टर्मिनोलॉजी व्हिच आर रियली वेरी वेरी essential to know about the living things. What is science? This term science has been taken from the Latin word sciencia means to know or the knowledge. Biology, it is the discipline which deals with the study of the living form or it is the science of life. So in other words, we can say the branch of science in which we deals about the living organism is said to be the biology. Term biology originated from the two Greek words. One is bios means life and logos means study. So biology is also called life sciences or the biosciences. These days, बहुत सारी अच्छी से अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटी में अब बायोलॉजी टर्म को हटा के बेसिकली लाइफ साइंसेज डिसिप्लिन बोला जाता है या फिर बायो साइंसेज बोला जाता है मीनिंग वही है टर्म बायोलॉजी वाज कोइंड बाय लमार्क एंड ट्रेविरिनस डू यू नो दिस बायोलॉजी अगेन डिवाइडेड इनटू द टू ग्रुप वन इज जूलॉजी अनदर वन इज द बॉटनी जूलॉजी मींस the branch of science in which we deals about the 
animals. June means animals, zoology. So, the study of animal is said to be zoology. And study of plant is said to be the botany. Now, what is living? Living kya hai? So, the object exhibiting growth, development, responsiveness, adaptations and other characteristics of life are designated as a living beings. And non-living things? These all features are basically absent in the case of the non-living things. Means, non-living things don't eat, don't grow, bleed, move and reproduce. They don't have senses. So, easily we can distinguish living organism from the non-living. How can we distinguish? Some features like living having the growth, development, adaptations, responsiveness and so many characteristics which are usually present in the case of the living and these all are absent in the case of the non-living. So, finally, what we can see? What is living organism? Living organisms have growth, reproduction, ability to sense, environment and mount a suitable response come to our mind immediately as a unique feature of the living organism. These features are usually present in any living organism which having the life. So one can add a few more features like the metabolism, ability to uh, self-replicate, self-organize. Uh, and interact. These are also included here. Now come to the general characteristics of living things. A lot of list is present here like cellular structure, metabolism, energy, growth, reproduction, consciousness, organization, homeostasis, variation, adaptation, healing and repair, excretion, movement, life span and death. So let's come one by one, right? So cell structure. My first characteristic feature is cell structure. It is a defining property of living organism. As you know, every living organism having a definite cell structure and it is a defining property. That means no any exceptions found here. This means this cell structure is present all in all living organisms. As you know everyone, everybody is made up of, every living thing is made up of a cell. Every organism is made up of a cell. Now the question is, what is cell? Cell is a structural, functional unit of life. Each living being is a complex entity when it is formed of one or more cells. Now, ab jitne bhi organism hai, unki body cell ki bani hai. Cell kya hai? Ye structural or functional basis of life hai. Now, on the basis of the number of the cell in any organism, we can classify entire cell into the two different groups. One is unicellular, another one is multicellular. In the case of the unicellular, all the vital functions performed by the single cell. What are the vital functions? Like digestion, circulation, respiration, excretion, reproduction, these all are performed by the single cell. Here we cannot see any the division of labor. Here we can't see the division of labor. In the case of the multicellular organism, so many cells are present there. And different cells performing different functions. Different uh, vital functions performed by the different cells. Here we can see easily division of labor. The cells are made up of protoplasm, that is the living matter. Protoplasm and cellular structure are absent in virus. The example of the unicellular organisms are basically bacteria, blue green algae, mycoplasma, protozoans, and one of the fungus which is unicellular is ist and multicellular rest of all. Like most of the except ist, all the fungus are usually multicellular. Animals, multicellular. The kingdom plancy. Multicellular. So, multicellularity have been seen in the kingdom fungi, kingdom plancy and kingdom animalia. Except ist in the case of the kingdom fungi. Ist is basically unicellular. Here we can see this is paramecium. 
Here we can see this is paramecium. Paramecium is a protozoa and protozoa is unicellular organism. Yeah, look, but if it, again, we can classify cell on the basis of the presence and absence of the nucleus. Now, just understand that unicellular or multicellular organism is what it is. Okay? So, it, according to the Whittaker's classification, in the year 1969, R.H. Whittaker classified entire organism into the five different kingdoms. Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protesta, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plancy, Kingdom Animalia. In the case of the Kingdom Monera, all the bacteria, blue-green algae or the cyanobacteria and mycoplasma comes here. These all are unicellular. In the case of the Protesta, all the protozoans, all the protestants are basically unicellular. And of course, Kingdom Fungi, one of the members of this kingdom is unicellular in nature. That is the yeast. So, here what we can see here? Paramecium. Paramecium is a protozoa, ciliated protozoa, and which comes under the kingdom Protista. Now look here. This one is the Trypanosoma. Trypanosoma is a zooflagellate, flagellated protozoans, which also comes from the kingdom Protista. This one is Euglena. Euglena is also the member of kingdom. Protista. Euglena is a member of kingdom Protista. This one is also unicellular. And amoeboid protozoan. This one. Amoeba. Amoeba is a? Amoeba is an amoeboid protozoan. And which also comes under the kingdom Protista. Which is unicellular. So these here uh, we can see a lot of examples present for the unicellular. Now, on the basis of the presence or absence of the nucleus, we can again classify the entire cell into the two different group that is the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic. This single word prokaryotic has been taken from the two Greek word. One is pro, pro means primitive and karyon means nucleus. So, primitive nucleus is present in prokaryotic. Primitive nucleus, another word we can say, incipient nucleus, nucleoid, nucleus-like, not exactly nucleus, nucleoid means nucleus-like. Genophore, prochromosomes, these all are basically the names of this single prokaryotes, used for the single word prokaryotes. So prokaryotic cells may jo nucleus hote hain, us nucleus ko hum kya bol sakte hain, what we call it? Nucleoid, genophore, prochromosomes, incipient nucleus, not well developed nucleus. Now the question is, what is the meaning of not well developed nucleus or the nucleoid? Nucleoid means nucleus like, not exactly nucleus. So all the membrane bound organelles are absent here in the case of the prokaryotes. So a well defined nucleus, may hum kya dekhenge? What we can see in the case of the well defined nuclei. There is a nuclear membrane, nuclear envelope, nuclear pore, nucleoplasm, nucleolus, chromatin reticulum. These all are present but these all are absent here. Here simply genetic material is scattered in the cytoplasm. So nuclear nucleus is not well developed. Here there is no nuclear envelope, no nuclear membrane, no nuclear pore, no nucleoplasm. Simply, the genetic material is scattered in the cytoplasm. This is said to be the nucleoid, nucleus-like, or the incipient nucleus, or the primitive nucleus, not well-developed nucleus. Second thing is, all what we can understand, if we are talking about the cellular organelle. Cellular organelle means, if the organelle present in the cytoplasm of the cell, is said to be the cellular organelle, like mitochondria, ribosomes, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, these all are the cellular organelles. In the case of the prokaryotic cell, the membrane-bound organelles are absent. 
membrane bound organelles like the mitochondria agar if a uh, plant is present then in the case of the plant chloroplast is present so mitochondria chloroplast lysosomes endoplasmic reticulum these all are absent dna is present but dna is naked dna is naked means dna is not linked with the histone protein which is a basic protein because basic amino acid is present there lysine and arginine so in the case of the prokaryotic organism dna is naked dna is not linked with the histone protein ribosomes is present ribosomes are basically membrane less cellular organelles these are basically found in the cytoplasm in a scattered manner in the case of the prokaryotic ribosomes 70s type of ribosomes present here and their sub unit is 30s and 50s type so these are the basic features or the characters of the prokaryotic cell in any prokaryotic cell we can see these features and the example is bacteria blue green algae or the cyanobacteria mycoplasma here the structure of the prokaryotic cell this is a typical structure of a bacterial cell bacteria is a prokaryotic organism so what we can see here we can see here there is a pili there is capsule present here here the example of a bacterial cell what we can see on the screen here we can see the structure of a typical bacterial cell in the typical bacterial cell we can see there is a cell wall but their composition is totally different because in the case of the bacterial cell the cell wall is made up of mucopolypeptide or the muco peptidoglycan in other word we can say murine so these three names are basically used for the cell wall of bacteria peptidoglycan mucopolypeptide and murine kai baar medical mein ye question pucha gaya hai ki what is the chemical composition present in a bacterial cell wall matlab bacteria ke cell wall mein kya chemical कंपोजिशन तो आप बोलोगे पेप्टिडोग्लाइकेन म्यूकोपोलीपेप्टाइड म्यूरी बट स्मार्टली आपको थोड़ा वर्क करना पड़ेगा केमिकल कंपोजिशन और ऐसा कोई ऑप्शन में दिया ही नहीं है आपके पास ऑप्शन में दिया हुआ है प्रोटीन प्लस कार्बोहाइड्रेट प्रोटीन प्लस लिपिड कार्बोहाइड्रेट प्लस लिपिड सो नाउ यू जस्ट एनालाइज वट आई एम सेन पैप्टीडोग्लाइकेन पैप्टाइड प्लस ग्लाइकेन peptido peptide these are protein and glycan is carbohydrate so protein plus carbohydrate is the chemical composition of the cell wall of a bacteria so the right answer is protein plus carbohydrate understand isliye main bar bar bolti hu ki aap jo bhi padho smartly padho now second thing plasma membrane plasma membrane this is as same as like the eukaryotic cell बट इन द केस ऑफ द बैक्टीरियल सेल जो सेल मेम्ब्रेन होता है वो बेसिकली इनवेजिनेट किया होता है वो फिंगर लाइक प्रोजेक्शन को शो करता है कुछ पोर्शन विच इज सेट टू बी दिजोजोम्स वट आर मेजोजोम्स मेजोजोम्स आर बेसिकली इट इज द साइट फॉर सेलुलर रेस्पिरेशन and this is the structure which is equivalent to the mitochondria of the eukaryotic cell mitochondria ko hum kya kehte hain it is the site for cellular respiration in the case of the eukaryotic cell in the case of the prokaryotic cell the site for cellular respiration is mesosomes another we can see here ribosomes is present already i told you ribosomes is 70s type and their sub unit is 30s and 50s type of in the case of the prokaryotic cells प्लास्मिक एक्स्ट्रा क्रोमोजोमल डीएनए इज प्रेजेंट हियर जो मेन डीएनए है वो तो है ही उसके अलावा यहाँ पे एक्स्ट्रा क्रोमोजोमल डीएनए होता है प्लास्मिक और इस प्लास्मिक को एज ए वैक्टर भी यूज किया जाता है न्यूक्लियोइड ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कर चुके हूँ न्यूक्लियोइड क्या है इट इज द न्यूक्लियस लाइट नॉट वेल डेवलप्ड इन सी पी एंट सो देयर इज नो सेलुलर लेस सी देयर इज नो any membrane is present this is just scattered genetic material found in the cytoplasm of the bacteria cell there is flagellum flagellum is meant for locomotion and yahan pe bhi flagellum jo 
डिफर करता है प्रोकैरियोटिक फ्रेजलम जो होता है वो नाइन प्लस जीरो अरेन्जमेंट को शो करता है लेट्स कम टू द यू कैरियोटिक सेल यू कैरियोटिक सेल इन द केस ऑफ प्लांट एंड यू कैरियोटिक सेल इन द केस ऑफ एनिमल हेयर न्यूक्लियस इज यू मीन्स इट इज ऑल्सो दिस सिंगल वर्ड न्यूक्लियस यू कैरियोटिक सेल दिस सिंगल टर्म यू कैरियोटिक has been taken from the two greek word one is you another one is the carrion you means true and carrion means nucleus true nucleus is present what is the meaning meaning is that here well defined nuclear membrane is present nuclear envelope is present nuclear pore is present nucleoplasm is present and the spherical central body that is the nucleolus is present chromatin reticulum is present in the nucleus this kind of structure of nucleus is said to be the well defined structure of nucleus and ye kaha dekhenge hum eukaryotic cells mein dekhenge let's see this is the nucleus nucleus mein nuclear there is a nuclear pore this is entire basically the nucleus and what we can see here nuclear pore is present nuclear envelope is present A spherical body. This, 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 this. Yes, this is this a spherical body is called the nucleolus, and inside the nucleus, thread-like structure is present, which is said to be the chromatin. Chromatin reticulum is present inside the nucleus in the nucleoplasm. So this is entire structure of the nucleus and the same structure of nucleus found in the case of the plant. प्लांट्स भी यूकैरियोटिक है तो यहाँ भी यूकैरियोटिक सेल के तौर पे क्या है यूकैरियोटिक में जो न्यूक्लियस होगा बिल्कुल वैसे ही होगा जैसे हमने अभी एनिमल में देखा है दिस इज न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियर पोर न्यूक्लियर मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज न्यूक्लियो प्लाज्म एंड सेंट्रल बॉडी इज सेट टू बी द्यूक्लियोलस कॉमन बोथ इज दिज ऑल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस इज जस्ट सिमिलर टू द एनिमल सेल प्लांट सेल और एनिमल सेल में जो न्यूक्लियस है वो बिल्कुल सेम है केस ऑफ प्लांट क्लोरोप्लास्ट इज प्रेजेंट एंड दिस क्लोरोप्लास्ट इज एबसेंट इन द केस ऑफ द एनिमल अनदर सेल वॉल सेल वॉल इज प्रेजेंट इन द केस ऑफ प्लांट एंड देयर कंपोजिशन इज द सेल वॉल इज बेसिकली मेटअप ऑफ द सेलोलॉजिक सेलोलोज का बना होता है सेलोलॉजिक सेल वॉल इज प्रेजेंट इन किंगडम प्लांट सी बट दिस सेल वॉल इज एबसेंट हियर बट हियर सेंट्रियोल इज प्रेजेंट दिस इज यू कैरेटिक एनिमल सेल एंड दिस इज यू कैरेटिक प्लांट सेल दे आर इज सर्ट इन डिफरेंसेस वट आर द डिफरेंसेस सम कॉमन फीचर्स ऑल्सो बट देर डिफरेंसेस सम डिफरेंसेस आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट हियर लाइक सेल वॉल इज एबसेंट इन द केस ऑफ एनिमल Chloroplast is absent. In the case of the uh, plant cell, Golgi complex found in the scattered manner, which is called the dictyosomes. But Golgi complex or Golgi body, well defined manner, आप कहाँ पे देखोगे? Animal cell में. इसमें scattered plant के केस में scattered manner में होता है, which is said to be the dictyosomes. ये भी कई बार पूछा हुआ क्वेश्चन है. In the case of the plant cell. Golgi body is present. What we call it? Dictyosomes. Endoplasmic reticulum is common for both. All the um, like mitochondria, vacuoles. Huh. In the case of the plant cell, there is a large vacuoles present. In the case of animal cell, what we can see? We can see small vacuoles is present. That's why here nucleus is central and large. But in the case of the plant cell. ये सेंट्रल नहीं होता है क्योंकि इसमें मेजर पोर्शन में वैक्यूल शिफ्ट हो जाता है तो जो थोड़ा पोर्शन बचा कंस्ट्रक्टेड मैनर में न्यूक्लियस रहता है अब आप पूरी तरह से क्लियर हो गए होंगे कि व्हाट इज प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल व्हाट इज यू कैरियोटिक सेल यू कैन डिफ्रेंसिएट बिटवीन द प्रो कैरियोट एंड यू कैरियोटिक सेल इजिली नाउ नेक्स्ट इज मेटाबोलिज्म वॉट इज मेटाबोलिज्म डू यू नो इन आवर बॉडी साइमल्टेनियसली there is breaking down and building up reactions takes place saath hi saath tootna aur banna ye chalta rehta hai sara reactions chal raha hota hai hamare body mein and this the 
combine combination of these two reaction breaking down as well as the building up is combinedly we call what we call metabolism let's see so all organism operate a network of thousand of chemical reactions this metabolism term is also taken from the greek word metaboli means state so the sum total of all the reactions is said to be the metabolism we can classify this metabolism into the two different group one is the catabolism and another one is the anabolism catabolism means something is breaking down and anabolism is something is building up in other word like for example polysaccharide is formed from the monosaccharides बहुत सारे मोनोसेक्राइड मिले मिल करके बना दिया पॉलीसेक्राइड तो कुछ बना दैट इज इनाबोलिज जैसे प्रोटीन डिसोसिएट होकर के टूट करके अमाइनो एसिड दिया ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ प्रोटीन दैट मीन्स केटाबोलिज सो मेटाबोलिज्म इज डिफाइनिंग प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ लिविंग विंग्स लाइक सेलुलर स्ट्रक्चर में हमने देखा था कि वो डिफाइनिंग प्रॉपर्टीज है विदाउट एनी एक्सेप्शन आपको ये सारे के सारे लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स में देखने को मिलेगा ठीक इसी तरह मेटाबॉलिज्म भी इट इज आल्सो अ डिफाइनिंग प्रॉपर्टीज ऑल एक्टिविटीज ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इंक्लूडिंग ग्रोथ मूवमेंट डेवलपमेंट रेस्पॉन्सिवनेस इवन रिप्रोडक्शन आर ड्यू टू द मेटाबॉलिज्म सो सी हियर केटाबॉलिज्म ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ लार्जर मॉलिक्यूल एनाबॉलिक एनाबॉलिज्म सिंथेसिस ऑफ लार्जर मॉलिक्यूल breaking down of larger molecule into the simpler one is catabolism and synthesis of bigger molecule from the simpler one is known as anabolism in the case of the catabolism energy is released in the case of the anabolism energy is absorbed so the basic differences between the catabolism and anabolism now the very common example for the catabolism is respiration and anabolism is photosynthesis what we can see here in the case of the catabolism or agar hum example respiration ko rakhte hain to yahan pe complex molecules suppose glucose c6h12o6 ye split up ho kar ke co2 and h2o me toota hai theek hai aur energy ko release karta hai this is respiration catabolic process anabolism mein when co2 and h2o in presence of sunlight chlorophyll certain enzyme to produce c6h12o6 complex molecules form ho raha hai from the smaller ones so this process is said to be the photosynthesis and photosynthesis is the best example of anabolic reaction anabolism now growth growth is irreversible increase in mass of an individual A multicellular organism increases its mass by cell division. In plant, growth is continued throughout life as they have mastomatic area and where cell division takes place regularly. In animal, growth occurs to a certain age after which cell divide only to replace and lose the cells. Unicellular organism also grow by cell division. Growth, growth is basically irreversible process. it is basically irreversible increment in mass of an individual growth is basically irreversible increment in mass of an organism a multicellular organism increases its mass by the cell division in the case of unicellular organism also they grow by cell division in plant growth is continue that means in the case of plant growth always occur throughout the life as they have meristematic areas where cell division takes place regularly but in the case of the animal cell growth is occurs to a certain age after which cell divides only to replace the lost cell let's see this is plant plant growth here the representation of the plant growth in the case of plant growth is throughout the life because meristematic area is present here and cell divide regularly what we can see in the case of the humans growth is not continuous it is not throughout the life restricted after certain period of time 
reproduction what are reproduction what is reproduction re means again production means to produce so reproduction it is a biological phenomena in which any organism can reproduce or to generate their own kind of individual this process is said to be the reproduction it is formation of new individual of the similar kind life arises from the pre existing life everybody knows every life is originated from the pre existing life jo pehle se life hai us life se new life ka origination hua hai to reproduction kya hai har wo organism jo apne jaise apne santan ki utpatti karte hain use hum reproduction kehte hain is process ko reproduction kehte hain so reproduction is not essential for the survival of life reproduction is not essential for the survival of the individuals नो नॉन लिविंग बट ये भी बात सही है कि नॉन लिविंग में रिप्रोडक्शन नहीं देखने को मिले सो नो नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट हैज द पावर टू रिप्रोड्यूस और रेप्लीकेट दम सेल्फ सो वट वी कंक्लूड रिलेटेड टू रिप्रोडक्शन रिप्रोडक्शन इट इज अ बायोलॉजिकल फिनोमिना इन विच एनी ऑर्गेनिज्म जनरेट और टू प्रोड्यूस देयर ओन काइंड ऑफ इंडिविजुअल एंड एवरी लाइफ इज ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द प्री एग्जिस्टिंग लाइफ रिप्रोडक्शन इज नॉट एसेंशियल फॉर the survival of the individual and no non living object has the power to reproduce or to replicate let's see reproduction reproduction are of two type one is asexual another one is sexual a means without sexual means involvement of the gamete and sexual reproduction fully involvement of the gametes asexual reproduction doesn't require two parents it requires only single parents asexual reproduction is uniparental asexual reproduction is uniparental whereas sexual reproduction is usually biparental asexual reproduction is the formation of new individual from the single parents and in the case of the sexual reproduction there are mainly three different events are involved one is pre fertilization second is fertilization and third one is the post fertilization in the pre fertilization event formation of the gamete in the case of the pre fertilization event what we can see we can see gametogenesis that means formation of the gamete male gamete or the female gamete to pehle gamete ka formation hota hai then when the gamete formed they fuse together the process is said to be the fertilization or the syngamy in which zygote formation takes place and next event is the post fertilization in which zygote undergoes to cleavage and develop to form the embryo in the case of the asexual reproduction without the formation and fusion of the gamete but in the case of the sexual reproduction formation and fusion of the gamete takes place now look here this is the result of sexual reproduction this is the picture of पारमीशियम ये पारमीशियम का पिक्चर है और पारमीशियम में इन द केस ऑफ पारमीशियम रिप्रोडक्शन मेनली टेक्स प्लेस बाय मींस ऑफ ट्रांसवर्स बाइनरी फ्यूजन व्हिच इज अ काइंड ऑफ एसेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इसमें ट्रांसवर्स बाइनरी फ्यूजन होता है आप देखो इसमें ये जो पारमीशियम है पारमीशियम का ये ट्रांसवर्स पोजीशन है जहां पे बाइफरकेशन होता है एंड देन ये दो डिफरेंट पारमीशियम में बन गया फॉर्म कर दिया सो दिस इज transverse binary fusion which is found in the paramecium protozoa hai which comes under the kingdom protista now next is this is amoeba in the case of amoeba reproduction takes place by means of binary fusion in which we can see simple binary fusion a constriction cause hota hai a tube bana constriction sa bana aur ye fir dissociate ho gaya and then two daughter amoebic cell ban gaya this is also the method of asexual reproduction Now next one is the example of fungus. और ये fungus का है कौन सा fungus? तो ये yeast है unicellular eukaryotic yeast. And in the case of yeast, reproduction takes place by means of budding. Here this is the parent body. This is parent body. Well, here what we can see, the bud is formed, and then bud enlarged and separate from the parent body and to form the new individual this is said to be the process of budding which is a kind of asexual reproduction 
So in the asexual reproduction, it occurs by a spore formation. In the case of asexual reproduction, it occurs by a spore formation, binary fusion, multiple fusion, fragmentation, regeneration. We are at sexual reproduction may the fusion product or the zygote give rise to the offspring. So in unicellular organism, growth and reproduction are synonyms. Unicellular organism ke case may growth or reproduction ek dusre se milta junta hai. Synonyms hai. Many organisms don't reproduce. For example, mool, a sterile work, wheeze. Mool, a sterile worker, we infertile human couple, they don't reproduce. Many organisms don't reproduce like mool, a sterile worker, be human being, some human being which are infertile. So infertile human couples unable to reproduce. Therefore, reproduction is not an all-inclusive characteristics of the living organism. So this is all about the reproduction and reproduction is also the fe characteristic feature of living organism. Now next is consciousness. Consciousness, it is basically awareness. Awareness of all around you, about the surroundings and response to the external stimuli. The external stimuli can be physical, chemical, biological. The stimuli are perceived by sense organs in higher animals. Plants don't possess such sense organs. However, they do respond to external factors such as the light, water, temperature, Polygents and other organisms. Human beings have an additional faculty of the self-consciousness. Consciousness is said to be the defining properties of the living organism. Another most important properties for the living organism is consciousness. And this is defining properties. Ye exclusively living ka feature ye living mein hi milega. Non-living mein nahi milega. Yani without any exception, jitane bhi living organism hai, sabhi mein consciousness hoga. Now, organization. A living being has an organized, uh, showing uh, typical organizations. A living being has multiple level of organization. Living cell has its own characteristic, which is not found in its organ. A cell ka apna alag characteristic feature hota hai, jo ki uske cellular organism se differ karta hai. Animal ki hi baat kare, to animal mein lower organisms, lower animals bhi hai, lower to higher animals bhi hai. To isme various Level of organization dekhne ko milta hai. Cellular level of organization ki baat kare. To sponges ke case mein. Sponges mein cellular level of organization hota hai. Cylindrata, tinophora, tissue level of organization hai. Clear cut division of liver aapko dekhne ko milega. Isse thoda aage badhe. Platyhelminthes, eschelminthes, nematehelminthes. Anilida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata. Yeh saare mein organ system level of organization hai. Quadata mein organ system level of organization hai. So, a lot of variations found at the level of the, their organization. Organization of the cellularity. Let's see. The level of organization. Firstly, some organic constituent form the cell and group of cell which is common in origin is said to be the tissue. And tissue aggregate together to form organ and organ aggregate aggregate together to form the organ system and organ system se organism ban gaya aur ye jo various uh, jo level of organization hai ye different organism mein different kind of hai jaise phylum porifera jisme all to all sponges aate hain cellular level of organization hai na fir jaise jaise higher bane a higher organism hue to definitely kya hua organization bhi differ kiya tissue se organ organ se organ system is tarah se bana now next Characteristic feature of the living organism is homeostasis. Homeo means alike. Stasis means state. Yani, bilkul ek jaisa state ka hoona. Outer temperature kitna bhi variation kyu na ho jai. Temperature rise kar jai, temperature down kar jai. Uska jada impact humare internal body temperature pe nahi padta. Internal body temperature pe nahi padne ki wajah se ek equilibrium established rata hai. Which is said to be the homeostasis. So, homeostasis is the state of steady internal, physical and chemical condition maintained by the living organism. This is the condition of optimal functioning for the organism and includes many variables such as body temperature and fluid balance being kept within certain preset limit. A favorable in internal environment suitable for the functioning of the body 
organ is present in every living being. So it is quite different from the external environment. Changes in external environment don't have much impact on their internal environment. As the living beings have a self-regulated system to adjust and maintain the internal environment, the phenomena is said to be the homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? It is basically a like standing. It is quite different from the external environment changes in external environment don't have much impact on their internal environment. As the living beings have a self-regulated system. Jitane bhi living organism hai, unme self-regulated system hota hai, jo usko adjust karke rakta hai, maintain karke rakta hai uske internal environment. And the phenomena is said to be the homeostasis. This is also the very important feature for the living organism. Now next feature is genetic variation. How variation occurs? As previously I told you, reproduction are of two types, asexual and sexual. In the case of the sexual reproduction, there is a genetic recombination takes place. And due to the genetic recombination, variations occur. Another important factor which causes variation is mutation. What are mutations? Mutations are certain change. Or ye change DNA me ya genes ke level pe baat kare, to uske ek single base agar change ho jate hai, usse bhi variation a jata hai. Or ye hi variation prolonged reh jata hai, to wo evolution ka us karta hai. So genetic variation is the difference in DNA among the individual level. Ek single base bhi agar change hua DNA ka, to kya hoga? Variation hoga. और ये वेरिएशन किसकी वजह से हो रहा है म्यूटेशन की वजह से हो सकता है जिसको हम पॉइंट म्यूटेशन कहते हैं अगर सिंगल बेस चेंज हुआ तो या जेनेटिक रिकॉम्बिनेशन की वजह से होगा देयर आर मल्टीपल सोर्स ऑफ जेनेटिक वेरिएशंस इंक्लूडिंग म्यूटेशन एंड जेनेटिक रिकॉम्बिनेशन द लिविंग बीइंग प्रोड्यूसेस वेरिएशन एंड हैव टू इवॉल्व विद टाइम दिस इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ डार्विन फिंचेस डार्विन चार्ल्स डार्विन जिन्होंने इवोल्यूशन पे वर्क किया था theory of natural selection ko diya tha to unhone kya dekha unhone dekha ye jo variation ho raha hai wo kyun ho raha hai aur evolution kyun hua kya region tha kya cause tha to darwin finches mein bahut tarah ke birds jo gulpago island pe charles darwin ne dekha tha to usme unhone dekha ki ek particular environment mein agar ye bird grow kar rahe hain develop kar rahe hain lekin environment jaise hi change hua climatic condition change hua तो जो अपने आप को वहां पे फिट कर पाए सरवाइव कर पाए वो सरवाइव किए नहीं कर पाए वो लॉस्ट हम तो ये जो बर्ड्स थी स्टार्टिंग में जो कंडीशन uh, था वहां पे बहुत सारे ग्रासेस थे प्लांट्स थे तो वो हरवी बोरस थी फ्रूट्स वगैरह खाए तो उनका जो बी जो शेप था बिल्कुल उस अकॉर्डिंग था जैसे जैसे क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन चेंज हुआ एक टाइम ऐसा आया जब वहां पे है ना प्लांट्स नहीं थे तो वो छोटे छोटे सर्वाइव करने के लिए छोटे छोटे कीड़े मकोड़ों को खाना शुरू की कार्निवोरस हो गई तो उनके बीच में मॉडिफिकेशन आया वो मॉडिफाई किए उसके जीन के लेवल पर चेंजिंग आया और इससे वेरिएशन हुआ और यही वेरिएशन अगर प्रोलॉन्ग्ड रह गया तो वो इवोल्यूशन का काउज बना नेक्स्ट इज एडाप्टेशन एडाप्टेशन इज द इवोल्यूशनरी प्रोसेस वेयर बाई एन ऑर्गेनिज्म बिकम्स बेटर एबल टू लीव इन इट्स हैबिटेट्स इट इज बेसिकली लैटिन वर्ड एक्ट टूवर्ड्स एंड अप्ट टू एडजस्ट यानी किसी पर्टिकुलर इन्वायरमेंट के अकॉर्डिंग अपने आप को एडजस्ट करना दैट इज एडेप्टेशन यूजफुल इनहेरिटेबल वेरिएशन और द चेंजेस इन द फॉर्म फंक्शन एंड बिहेवियर विच हेल्प एन ऑर्गेनिज्म टू एडजस्ट वेल एंड सक्सेसफुली इन इट्स एनवायरमेंट आर कॉल्ड एडेप्टेशन एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इज कंसिडर्ड बेस्ट एडेप्टेड टू एन इन्वायरमेंट वेन इट पजेस इज इनहेरिटेड ट्रेड दैट इनहेंस इट्स सर्वाइवल an ability to produce in that environment let's see here are some example for the adaptation in desert area xerophytic plant occurs and in xerophytic plants mein unka us particular environment mein rehne ke liye adaptation hai wo adapted hai jaise hum opensia ki baat kare opensia mein leaf modified kar gaya spines mein taki wo transpiration ke rate ko reduce kar sake कैमल ये डेजर्ट में रहने वाला एडेप्टेड रहने वाला एनिमल कैमल पोलर बियर 
जो कि स्नोई एरिया में रहते हैं बहुत ही कोल्ड क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन है वहां का तो उनका बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर बिल्कुल उस पर्टिकुलर इन्वायरमेंट में रहने के लिए अडेप्टेड हो गया पैंगविन दिस ऑल आर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एडेप्टेशन नाउ हीलिंग एंड रिपेयर दिस इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पोर्टेंट फीचर ऑफ द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म लिविंग बींग कैन रिपेयर एंड ब्रोकन लिविंग बींग कैन रिपेयर Living beings can repair the broken and injured parts with physical damage or the disease suffered by an organism. Healing involved to the repair of the uh, living tissues, organs, and the biological system as a whole and resumption of the normal functioning. Let's see here an example of the healing and repair. This is shows some wound of the which is here showing the blood clot, inflammatory conditions. then proliferative stage and then remodeling this is the healing and repair movement living being shows movement movements are of two type one is invisible another one is the visible in the case of the invisible movement cannot be perceived by the by our senses they take place at the level of the molecule but in the case of the visible can be judged by our senses they take place at the level of the cell tissue and organ these are the basic difference plant and some animals are sedentary or the fixed at a particular place other are able to move from place to place which is said to be the locomotion phenomena is said to be the locomotion and this locomotory organelles are different in different organisms like amoeba ke case mein dekhiye wahan bhi locomotion hota hai pseudopodia ke through hota hai बैक्टीरिया के केस में देखें या जो फ्लैजलेट्स के केस में देखें जो प्रोटोजोन्स हैं जो फ्लैजलेट्स तो उसमें फ्लैजला के थ्रू होता है युगलिना में मूवमेंट फ्लैजला के थ्रू होता है कुछ ऑर्गेनिज्म लाइक पैरामीशियम सीलिएटेड प्रोटोजोन्स हैं उसमें सीलिया के थ्रू होता है जितने भी लिविंग आई मीन ह्यूमन बींग्स हैं उनमें लिम्ब होते हैं है ना तो ये बहुत सारे यानी कि डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनिज्म डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लोकोमोटरी ऑर्गन एंड दिस इज दिस फेनोमेना इज सेट टू बी द लोकोमोशन नाउ नेक्स्ट इज लाइफ स्पैन व्हाट इज लाइफ स्पैन लाइफ स्पैन इट इज अ ड्यूरेशन बिटवीन द बर्थ टू द नेचुरल डेथ इज सेट टू बी द लाइफ स्पैन एवरी लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म हैज अ डेफिनेट लाइफ स्पैन of birth growth mature aging senescence and death death the stoppage of various life activities at last the stoppage of the various life activities is said to be the death death occurs due to the aging disease predation accident aging normally occurs in all organism after a certain period of reproductive maturity it is absent in some cases where the organism multiply by binary fission like in the case of the bacteria and amoeba binary fission multiple fission se ye reproduce karte hain to ye inki kabhi death nahi hoti hai isliye inhe kya kaha jata hai immortal kaha jata hai so ye topic yahi pe cover hota hai agar aapko ye video pasand aaya to definitely ise like kijiye share kijiye subscribe kijiye aur ha bell icon ko all karna na bhuliyega 